Hi guys, welcome back to your mysteries channel. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. It's very much appreciated. I've been talking about ancient cataclysms and it's crazy, interesting, scary stuff. What makes it so scary is that we know that these events have happened. They've happened over and over again. And during these times in the ancient past, we've almost been completely wiped out. As we all know, there are flood myths and histories that span the earth. And these myths state that the earth's population was all but wiped out. Yet here we stand, the last of the hominids to walk earth. Today we're going to talk about an event that happened around 70,000 BC. An event that also nearly wiped us out. And when I say nearly, I mean, ooh, it was like that close. It's an event that is thought to have killed off the vast majority of hum humans and quite possibly many other species upon earth. This event is a mystery to this very day, and every time we think we know what happened, new evidence pops up, smacks us in the face, is like, keep looking, people. You don't got it yet. We know something big happened. There's evidence, recorded evidence, that's right, in our genetic history. And it wasn't just people this happened to. Parallel bottlenecks to the one that humanity suffered at 70,000 BC are proposed to exist among chimpanzees, gorillas, rhesus macaques, orangutans, and the odd man out, oddly, tigers. I feel like tigers made it onto this list because a lot of, um, a lot of scientists have really looked at their genetic record. They were so critically endangered that a lot of attention has been paid to them. But I'm guaranteeing in the future, we're going to see when we have more genetic information about other mammals and reptiles and things around us, that this bottleneck happened in many species, if not most species around 70,000 BC. A theory that was most widely held for a hot minute is called the Toba catastrophe theory. It was presented in the late 1990s to early 2000s and it suggests that the bottleneck in humanity occurred approximately around the same time that a super volcano named Toba in Indonesia erupted. The eruption in Indonesia happened at about 74,000 BC, which in the span of Earth is not even a breath, but in human terms, that's many, many generations. So it's hard to say if that was it. I think this is part of what scientists are like, man, it just doesn't make sense, right? We know that by 70,000 BC, humanity is so wiped out and decimated that it is estimated that possibly only 40 breeding pairs are left. They believe that humanity's population went down to f between one and 5,000. Now the Toba hypothesis is based on geological evidence. There was a sudden climate change and it coalesced with the bottlenecks that we saw in humanity, other primates and tigers. And so they were thinking it's gotta be somehow tied together. And for a while, that's what it looked like. They truly thought that Toba erupted and this was the biggest eruption in human history, bar none, the biggest. The biggest eruption that occurs in uh, written history is Tambora, also in Indonesia. And Toba was 17 times the size of Tambora. Tambora set off a year without summer and then like mm, about a 10 year period where there was drop temperatures, crop failures, and other things of that nature. So basically they feel like Toba erupted blacken the sky with ash, plunging earth into an ice age. For a little bit there, they had assumed they had estimated that global temperatures dropped by about 10 degrees Celsius and threw us into like a mini ice age while we were actually in an ice age. So it got, it just got a lot colder. Since this is the largest eruption in human history, a lot of people are studying this. A lot of people from various backgrounds are studying this. Teams traveled the world to track down shards of volcanic glass that spewed into the atmosphere and fell many places around the world. Scientists from, the, from around the world also note that above, at, and below this volcanic shard level, human tools were found. So they know that the volcano itself didn't kill people. In fact, they thought we actually survived it pretty darn well, at least for a few hundred to well, up to a few thousand years. And not only humanity, I mean, the Neanderthals survived it. We also know that the little hobbits of Flores survived it even. And they were right there in Indonesia. So it didn't make sense. You would think that 
all of the gases that are spewed out, volcanic winter that's gonna ensue is gonna especially kill off the people that are closest to the volcano, but it doesn't look like that. Tribes in East Africa definitely fared the best, and that is also where the most diversity in the human genome record occurs to this very day. The bottleneck is not as evident on their side as it is for the rest of humanity, but something happened because then there's this massive dying out. Now, when they went to go take ocean samples and to take core samples from ice cores in Greenland, they started to see that some places were definitely affected by a volcanic winter, but some places, not so much. So what the heck was it? If we didn't go into a massive re-glaciation period during a glaciation period, I mean, it's hard to understand. If the degree, if the temperature of earth didn't drop so much that we didn't become human popsicles then what the heck was it what was it well i think it's a combination effect this is my theory and it's kind of out there but maybe maybe i was looking around and i was trying to think maybe it was a disease i was thinking when you look at ma massive cataclysms on earth a lot of things seem to happen in groups you're gonna have war you're gonna have famine you're gonna have pestilence, disease, all these things happen together. There's a very good reason, you know, misery loves company. Let's just say Toba erupts. The eruption spews out a ton of ash. I mean, all around the world, five inches closer to the volcano and the further out, there's still ash from this volcano. This ash, it carries a lot of poison inside of it. That poison is called fluorine. This is my take and this is my theory. Sounds like fluoride and that's because they are related, but fluorine is the mineral that occurs near volcanoes. When a volcano erupts, it pulverizes this stuff, sends it up in ash, disperses it, and it falls equally on all of the vegetation around. The vegetation then begins to poison the animals that are eating it, and it also contaminates water supplies. So here's my take. My theory is that Toba erupted not one enormous explosion and then it was over, but one enormous explosion and many smaller eruptions that possibly happened over the next few decades to few hundred years. And this entire time, people are constantly being fed more and more and more fluorine. They're drinking it through the water, they're eating it with, um, poison vegetation, even wild animals at this point in time. And over time, some interesting things happen. Dental fluorosis is when your teeth have been exposed to too much fluoride or fluorine, they become super calcified, but brittle and weak at the same time. It completely messes your teeth up. That usually occurs before skeletal fluorosis happens. Skeletal fluorosis attacks the bones inside of you. It makes it more dense and wider, but weaker at the same time, making you prone to fractures and um, deformity, and it can severely cripple you over time. But this continues to build up inside of people, and it's building up and it's building up. Mothers who have fluorosis are now becoming pregnant when they can become pregnant because that is another side effect of fluorosis. It um, dampens reproduction in both men and women, but especially men. And not only that, but women who have been subject to lots of fluorine also tend to have less testosterone, which I know people are like, testosterone is not for women unless you're pregnant, which causes you to have premature birth. I think that Toba erupted and the earth was subject to extremely high amounts of fluorine, poisoning everything, causing us not to die off because of a, a volcanic winter, but because of poisoning of fluoride, poisoning us so that we become weaker individuals, we're, we're uh, more susceptible to injuries in a time when, you know, there wasn't really a medical field to save you. And not only that, but even the younger people, they have a much harder time being able to conceive, have children. And when they do, many of these children grow up with huge deformities, not making it into adulthood. This might have happened for many generations, quickly depleting the population of Earth and to the point where we barely even make it. Only 40 breeding pairs saved the lot of us. Anyway, that's my crazy wacky theory. Tell me what you think. I'm totally cool with you guys disagreeing with me 
And if you do, hey, just put it down in the comment section. I wanna know what you guys think about it too. Like I've said before, thank you for watching my video. And if you like what you watch, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell so you know when other videos come out and share if you wanna share. Thank you very much. Have yourselves a very great day.